It's Friday, April the 4th, 2014. I'm Mark Chantilly and this is episode number 28 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning March the 31st, 2014. General Motors has issued an official recall notice for the Cadillac ERR range extended electric car. The recall affects 656 cars made between the end of September last year and mid-February this year. According to the official recall notice issued by Cadillac, a fault in the car's electronic stability control software could lead to the system failing to alert the driver when the system itself is either partly or fully disabled. Basically, a little light on the dash doesn't come on. But it's an important light. The recall will begin in the middle of April and be offered free of charge to customers. Cadillac says it will contact owners directly on or about the 17th of April. Until all effective cars have been given the software update, Cadillac has told dealers not to give any cars to customers. So if you've been waiting for your Cadillac ELR, you're going to have to wait just that little bit longer. We've been keeping you informed about Polar, the UK charging network that is switching from free service to a paid one. A couple of weeks ago I talked about the new tariffs for charging and what each level of membership entitled a user to. To say that the community was a little upset about the prices would be an understatement. In certain circumstances, a driver of a range extended vehicle like the Volta Ampera would find that driving on petrol was actually cheaper than driving on electricity. Due to go live on the 1st of April, we checked their site the day before to see if anything could change. And it had. The prices for the tariffs had reduced. Again, this show isn't the time to go into this as it's far too complicated, but in general the pricing had been tweaked to bring the cost of slower charging down a little. Enough to make a difference to drivers? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Staying with the Polar Network for a bit, it seems that their new charging scheme didn't launch as planned. The launch was delayed a couple of days, leaving customers confused as to whether they were going to be charged for topping up or not. The website is now live and kicking, along with a smartphone app that allow the pay-as-you-go access to their network. But the website did reveal a few interesting things. Their pay-as-you-go service is actually a prepayment service where you have to top up with your phone with at least £20. The most interesting piece of information in our digital age, where we are just data to be sold, exchanged and analysed, is that all data collected by Polar can be shared with BMW UK. Why BMW need this data or why Polar has given it to them is unknown at the moment but we are trying to look into it. As always you'll know more when we do. Tesla has been fighting against a lot of established systems and even worse lots of well-funded people who want to keep the systems as they currently are. But it seems they do have allies. Mike Johnson, chief executive of AutoNation, the largest dealership group in the US, says Tesla should be allowed to sell its electric cars to customers if it wants. Yes, the head of a dealership group is taking Tesla's side. Talking with Automotive News, Jackson warned that some of the attempts to stop Tesla from selling direct to customers in states like New Jersey, Arizona and Texas could only end up hurting, not helping existing auto dealers. Why? Tesla has power. The Gigafactory to be exact. He argues that making an enemy of Tesla at this point could lead to potentially being left out in the future. Where will the Gigafactory be placed? In all likelihood, it's not going to go to a state that doesn't allow Tesla to sell its cars. Basically, he's saying, like it or not, Tesla is here to stay. Might as well make friends. Battery rental is one of those models in the EV world that sounds like it should have people queuing up to take part. But in reality, it's not that popular. In general, that is. I know some people love it. But due to this general feeling about it, rumours are abound about Renault maybe allowing people to buy their cars without the battery rental. But this week, Renault confirmed to Transport Evolve that, nope, This isn't going to happen. They said that they see battery rental as the most advantageous solution for their customers. However, just to add an element of confusion to this, Renault does sell the Zoe without battery rental in one country, Norway. You see, due to the way their incentives are set up, a Zoe with battery rental wouldn't be eligible, so Renault sells it as a whole. But they are, we learn, the exception. Back in the early days of modern electric cars, there were all sorts of price gouging around leafs and bolts. Stories of thousands being added to the expected price were abound. And that tradition is continuing with the BMW i3. We were first alerted to the problem by BMW Active E Electronaut Jack Spratt, who made a post on Facebook over the weekend complaining that his local BMW dealer was adding extras to his BMW i3 that customers didn't want, then hiking the sticker price. And he's not alone. We've heard of instances of dealers inflating the prices as much as $5,000 over the normal price for i3 customers who are new to the brand. It even appears that BMW dealers are hiking the lease pricing well above the official BMW suggested rates. But did BMW themselves set the precedent for this by offering their fully loaded launch spec with no other options? 
If you live in the UK, you probably know what The Gadget Show is. Channel 5's flagship geek show, it runs through all the modern tech, often putting them through extremes to see how well they really cope. An all-weather tent being subjected to artificial flash flooding, indestructible USB sticks being blown up, and so on. Basically, the show combines comedy, geekiness, and gadget reviews. Once a year, they hold a Gadget Show Live, a massive exhibition of the latest in tech which sees anyone who is interested in selling to well, people like me and Nikki appearing. And this year, Volkswagen will be there showing off their latest piece of geeky kit, their plug-in hybrid Golf GTE. With a 1.4 litre turbocharged stratified fuel injection engine, an 80 kilowatt electric motor, and a seven speed DSG gearbox, the Volkswagen Golf GTE promises to offer an all electric range of 30 miles on the NEDC test cycle, and a theoretical combined range of 580 miles in ideal conditions. It'll be on the VW podium, along with their futuristic XL1 and the cool little e-Golf. If you're popping along, you're even be able to test drive the e-Golf, not the GT or the XL1 though. It's been a funny week in the European Union. They've passed two pieces of legislation that's had us scratching our heads. Firstly, they've made it a requirement for internal combustion engine vehicles, including buses, passenger cars and commercial vehicles, to reduce their noise output in stages by 4 decibels by 2024. The new legislation aims to reduce traffic-related noise output by 25% from internal combustion engine vehicles over the next 12 years. Brilliant, I hear you say. Yes, quieter city centres, that's what we want. But another piece of legislation was also passed requiring all new electric vehicles sold in the EU to be fitted with an acoustic vehicle alerting system. Yeah. The EU says that the mandatory noise alert system for all electric and hybrid cars will make them safer for everyone, addressing fears that children, the elderly and visually impaired road users are at a higher risk of being hit by electric cars because they can't hear them coming. So one set of cars are being told to become quieter, while another type is being told to become noisier. Yeah. One positive to come from this, though, is that the Daily Mail in the UK, our right-wing anti-EU, anti-EV newspaper, has had to choose which stance to go with. and chose the pro EV size. Yeah, bit weird. Which meant UK readers got treated to a paper that usually hates EVs, arguing for them to be left alone. Always a silver lining and all that. The UK EVSC Association, a trade body that represents suppliers of charging stations and charging station management systems in the UK, has written a strongly worded letter asking a UK charity to cease promotion of do-it-yourself charging stations due to concerns over their safety. They said, and I quote, Members agree that the promotion of DIY charging points is highly problematic and runs the risk of resulting in inferior and poorly constructed charging points, which, in many cases, will not have had the correct testing and certification requirements. Potentially hazardous DIY charging points could result in injury to personnel, fires and damage to the electric vehicle, which is something that industry must avoid. This caused a bit of consternation in the EV world, where many DIY projects are strongly backed by the community. The charity in question, Zero Carbon World, the Open EVSE project, and Electric Motorworks all argued that DIY charging stations, when in the hands of someone who knows what they are doing, are perfectly safe and no more dangerous than a commercial charging station. What do you do if you're an overworked Foley artist when you see a car that needs some noise adding in post-production? You add the engine sound, of course. It's probably an ingrained reflex. Unfortunately, this happened during a 60 Minutes report on Elon Musk and the car in question was a Model S. CBS was open and came forward about what happened, but maybe, just maybe, the Foley engineers were following some sort of new EU prescribed rule to add more noise to EVs, even those on TV. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for our talk show where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. And breaking news this week, TEN is now available as a podcast. Tell all your friends. I'm Mark Chatterley, and until next time, stay juiced up. Boop, 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 boop,